Hey friends, in this episode, I'm going to share with you how you can use the tools built into your digital mixer to scientifically calibrate your PA system to get the very best sound possible. Now, if you're working with a, a large provider of uh, sound systems, they're going to come into your arena, rig up their system, and undoubtedly set up some calibration microphones and do an acoustical analysis and tweak up the system so that it has the very best performance. And you can do the same thing if you're using a digital mixer with some pretty inexpensive tools. And by doing so, you'll get better sound and it will make your mixing easier. In my experience, I've found that when I'm working with a, a PA system that has been properly equalized so that it has relatively flat response, my job of mixing bands is easier. I have a theory that when bands play songs from one key to another key to another key, if the system doesn't exhibit flat response and has gain shifts between these keys, as they switch songs, I need to tweak my mix in order to compensate for the deficiencies in the PA system. On the other hand, if I have a PA system that has relatively flat response, then I find as the band slides from songs that go from one key to the next to the next, and if they're a relatively competent band, I have to do a fairly small amount of adjustment song to song to keep the band in the pocket. I don't know, it's just a theory, but I have found that it's easier for me to mix bands on a PA system that's properly calibrated than one that isn't. And so this is all about how we can scientifically and properly adjust the equalization of our system for the best results. Now I did a prior video on system equalization and I'd invite you to take a look at that to explore the limitations of equalization because we can't just take a junky, bad loudspeaker that has really irregular response, throw a whole bunch of EQ into the equation to drive it to flat, and suddenly have a fantastic loudspeaker. It just doesn't work that way. But we can take a good loudspeaker system, and almost any loudspeaker system is going to have some irregularities in its response, and just do a few little tweaks here and there to smooth that system out, and it will improve the performance and you'll get better shows. Now, question is, how do we know what equalization to dial up? Well, obviously the first thing we can do is, um, being experienced audiophiles, we can walk into the room, play a little music on the system that we're familiar with, and you'll probably have a pretty good idea saying, hmm, sounds a little bright to me sounds like the mid-range is a little weak in the uh, upper mids and so forth and you can just adjust the system so it sounds correct to you. Now unfortunately us humans have pretty short acoustical memories and I think that I've got a pretty good ear but I've certainly had the experience where I've walked into a sound system either a PA system or a home hi-fi and sat there and listened to it and thought, eh, yeah, yeah, not too bad, it's all right. And then had the opportunity to flip a switch and switch over quickly to another pair of speakers, which are of much higher quality than the ones I was just listening to, and uh, be shocked and say, wow, I thought the speakers I was listening to were, were not too bad. And then I flip over to these and goodness, what a difference. I mean, the second set of speakers are of much higher caliber than the first. And uh, suddenly that first set of speakers that I was pretty okay with, I'm not so okay with anymore. They, uh, it really shows the faults after I've been able to compare them to something better. So with your PA system, an easy way you could do that is you could play some music that you're familiar with at a moderate level, not too loud just, you know, comfortable. And uh, as you're playing that music that you're familiar with, you could plug in a pair of headphones that you are comfortable and familiar with. And uh, as the music's playing, you could slip those phones on and listen to the music through the headphones. And when you pull them off, you hear the music out of the PA system. And as you go back and forth between the headphones and the PA system, you should be able to hear the difference. And then your task is to 
tweak the equalization on your PA system and tell the sound as closely as reasonably possible will match what you're hearing in the headphones that you are familiar with and know and trust. And that should be a pretty good way to get pretty close to a reasonable equalization on the PA system. Of course, in either of those cases, we're relying upon our ears, which are a little failable, I suppose, and it's not really a scientific analysis. So to do a more scientific analysis, you could use tools like um, the Smart RTA application that runs on a PC, which is a great tool and it provides all sorts of information. And it also uses FFT analysis, which helps reduce some of the spurious information that is coming in due to room reflections and so forth. And uh, that's probably the kind of tool that a professional would use. Unfortunately, it's a little more complicated to set up than what I'm going to demonstrate here, and it's a little bit more expensive. So you can use the tools that are built into your digital mixer to do a lot of this work for you, because almost every digital mixer these days has an RTA application on every single mic channel. So we can use that to analyze the signal coming off of our speakers and see where the deficiencies are. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run pink noise, which is a calibrated noise source that has equal power density per octave into the mixer. We'll energize the PA system with that noise and listen to it with a calibration microphone coming into one of the channels on the board and see what the spectrum is. Now in a perfect world, of course, if the speaker system was perfect, we should see a flat spectrum because that's what we're putting out with pink noise. But we're not going to see a flat spectrum because our speakers aren't perfect. And so then we can use the equalizer function inside of our mixer board to push the spectrum around a little bit to try to take care of any of the major deficiencies that we're experiencing. So in order to do this task, you're going to need a calibration microphone. Now this is a um, pretty inexpensive calibration microphone. It's about 50 bucks. It's not a laboratory grade instrument, but it's close enough for what we need. It's probably within a couple of dB here and there. Um, of course, we have to keep in mind that there's going to be irregularities in the frequency response in both the loudspeaker system and your calibration mic. So this is not going to be a measurement that's accurate to a dB because, you know, might have an issue right here too. But it will be close enough to smooth out the system and make uh, an improvement in your sound quality. And in addition to the microphone, we're going to need a source of pink noise. A number of ways to get pink noise. Um, you could use a pink noise generator like this one right here. Well, yours will be a lot prettier than this one, but you can have an external pink noise generator box that you just take the signal out of and put it into one of the other channels in your board to run that through the mixing board and drive it out to your speakers. Um, yeah, this one here is a homebrewed box that I did, but it works well, don't worry. Maybe an easier way is to uh, use your smartphone and you can get applications from people like Audio Technica which are completely free and they have various functions in them such as RTA functions and uh, SPL meter functions and tone generators which can generate pink noise. You could get an MP3 file, a music file, that is a uh, file full of pink noise. And that should be pretty easy to find if you dig around the internet a little bit. If you uh, can't find one anywhere and you'd like one, uh, hit me up and uh, I'll be happy to share one with you. And then finally, a lot of mixing boards, including the M32, X32 series, have a oscillator function built into them that can generate pink noise, which is what I'll be doing in this demonstration. Now, like I mentioned, I'm going to be using the X32, but your mixer no matter what it is, if it's a digital mixer and has a RTA function on the channel inputs, will probably work just fine also. So what I've got set up right here is I've got a cable connected to the output of the mixer and to channel 16, which is one of the mic inputs. And so I've got the mic input and the mixer output right here. There's nothing special about channel 16, of course. and. Uh, before I begin, 
I'm going to go up to channel number 16 and make sure that phantom power is disabled because I don't want DC voltage sitting on this line. So I'm going to make sure the phantom power is disabled and I'm going to make sure that that channel is muted so that channel 16, the input signal, does not go anywhere on the board. It doesn't go out to our monitor buses, it doesn't go out to our mains or anything like that because it's going to be having a microphone right in front of the speakers and uh, that's a sure recipe for feedback and mayhem if you had that channel turned up. So we do not want to turn the channel up. We're just simply going to use that channel for its RTA function to measure the spectrum of the sound that it's seeing. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect directly that channel's input, channel 16 input, to the output of the mixer and so I just make a loop right through the mixer itself, not even going out to the speakers, and I'm going to drive pink noise out of the mixer and right into the microphone channel, and I'm going to take a look at it on the RTA, and it should be perfectly flat, or, you know, pretty close anyway. And so that'll just be a verification of our tool. So I'm going to take the output of our mixer, the channel 16 input, and just put them directly together. And then I'm going to uh, hop over to my computer and uh, share the screen with you, which I think will be a little easier for you to follow along with than uh, trying to watch me on the iPad here. And uh, we'll make sure that the mixer is working properly and analyzing the pink noise nicely. And if that's the case, then we can disconnect these guys, we'll hook it up to our loudspeaker system and a calibration mic and we'll tweak up the system. So let's go over to the computer and take a look at what's happening there. And of course, like I say, if you're using a mixer other than an X32, well your screens will be a little different, but the concept is the same and it should work just fine for you too. If you're using an X32 or M32, well I guess you can follow along step by step. So let's go give this a try, and uh, we'll check it out. So here you're looking at my computer screen, and we're on the mixer control panel. Like I mentioned, your mixer might look a little different, but uh, functionality should be pretty similar. Hopefully you can follow along. Now, as I mentioned before, I connected channel 16 to our outputs. I made sure that phantom power was disabled and that the channel is muted, so the signal from that channel is not going anywhere. We're just going to use channel 16 as a RTA function, a real-time analyzer, to um, see the spectrum of the signal that's going into it. Now if I had a, my pink noise generator on one of these other channels, I could bring its level up in order to drive pink noise out to the outputs, but in the X32 mixer we have built-in pink noise generator, so I'm going to enable that by going to monitor and this comes and then I'll take the oscillator tab which uh, allows us to generate sine waves, pink noise or white noise. We've got pink noise selected. I've got the output level of the pink noise set relatively low because I don't need to pound things too hard and we will turn that on. And as we do you see that the level of the generator comes up which is great. And I can get rid of that panel and we are now putting pink noise to the outputs, which you can see. And uh, because that uh, ch the output channel is getting plugged back into the input on channel 16, we see the signal appearing here as well. If I was to take a look at the left or right outputs and pull up the equalizer with the RTA function enabled, I've got no equalization dialed up whatsoever and you see that the output signal is relatively flat in its spectrum as it should be if it's pink noise. The signal is being wrapped around to channel 16 right down here and so likewise there's no equalization dialed up on 16 and it too is showing an input signal that is relatively flat in spectrum and so that's perfect that uh, proves to us that the pink noise generator works with the board and it can be wrapped around to one of the input channels to use as a measurement device and it all looks great. So we're going to be looking at the spectrum of that noise coming into channel 16 to uh, analyze what's happening 
but we want to make our adjustments to the equalization of the system on the main left and right bus because we want it to affect everything coming through to correct any deficiencies that are in our loudspeaker system. And we can prove that that will have some effect by just grabbing one of these controls right here and we'll make a change to the system. So this is now showing that there's a dip in the spectrum with the pink noise that's being generated. And if we take a look at what's coming back into the board in 16, well, its EQ is flat, but the spectrum of the noise signal has been changed by that equalization adjustment that we just made on our mains. So that uh, proves to me that things should uh, respond the way that we want them to. So we'll go back here and we'll undo that equalization adjustment that we just pushed in. And we'll see that once again in 16 now we have a flat spectrum. So um, that looks like we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the uh, connection between the mains and channel 16 and we'll plug the mixer into our loudspeaker system and I'll plug a calibration mic into channel 16 and that should show us the spectrum as it comes out of the loudspeakers and undoubtedly the speakers will not be quite as flat in their response as a piece of wire is. So we'll do that and we'll come right back. Okay, so our next step is to take our cabling here and disconnect the mixer outputs from channel 16 and we will plug our calibration mic into the input channel which is uh, in our case channel 16 and we will take the mixer output and plug this into our PA system to drive the loudspeakers. Now maybe you're going into powered speakers, maybe you're going into a crossover unit, whichever. If you're um, going into a crossover or if you have subwoofers and tops, as we start adjusting the equalization, the first thing that I would adjust before adjusting the equalizer on the mixer is the crossover or the relative volume between the subwoofers and the tops. And so I would try to get the spectrum more or less straightened out just with the crossover or the speaker gains first. And then we'll take care of any little aberrations that are remaining with the system equalizer. Now, I'm going to put the calibration mic in front of our loudspeakers to, in front of one set of our loudspeakers, of course, either the left side or the right side, doesn't really matter, um, in front of the speakers in order to measure the acoustical output of the speaker system so we can measure it. Now, we're not in a laboratory environment here. We're just trying to get relatively close. But we want as little interruption from our environment as possible. So ideally, I would be doing this task outdoors, away from any boundary surfaces. So I wouldn't have the loudspeaker system set up next to any large walls um, or uh, you know any large objects. Now, of course, we're probably going to be somewhat close to the ground, and that's just the world that we live in. And so uh, try to get yourself out in free space and outdoors if at all possible so you have less reflections happening that could be impacting our measurements. Um, the low end is going to be most compromised by boundary effects and uh, you know the impact of other things that are in the vicinity such as the ground. And so I'm a little bit dubious of the measurements that are happening below 100 hertz. So in that area, I tend to kind of just tweak it in by ear. One thing that we can do is we can move the microphone position around a little bit, plus or minus a couple feet this way or that way, and see the changes that occur in the spectrum. And we'll know that those changes are primarily the effect of our environment, not really the loudspeaker system. Those parts of the spectrum that stay consistent, well, that's probably coming off the speaker. Um, I'm going to be putting this microphone relatively close to the loudspeaker system because I want the sound from the speaker to be predominant, um, but I don't want to be so close that it's picking up more of one individual driver than another because I want the, to listen to both the horns and the woofer drivers and all that with this microphone. So I'll probably be back maybe six feet or so pointed at kind of the center of that speaker system so I get a reasonable pickup of all the sound energy coming off of all of the drivers and I'm back far enough that the sound from all the various drivers in the system can mix together nicely 
but I'm not so far back that I'm getting a lot of background noise and um, you know the interaction from the environment that we're in and understand we're trying to equalize the speaker system to be flat we're not trying to analyze what the room interaction is after the speaker system is flat then we can set that as a baseline and then when you go in, into one room or another room you can then see what the differences are and make tweaks for that room environment and understand um, that there's limitations to being able to equalize a room. Once again, if you check my equalization video that I did previously, I, I talked to this subject some. But if the room has certain resonances, it's going to ring at those particular tones, no matter what you do for equalization. Um, the equalization is a, a good tool to try to reduce the amount of energy we drive into the room if it's going to yell at a particular frequency, but we can't really fix a room with equalization directly. But we can try to push things or pull things a little bit here and there in order to correct for our loudspeaker deficiencies. So, like I say, we want to get the speaker preferably into free space where it's not going to have any boundary effects. And we'll put the microphone close enough to the speaker that we get a good pickup of the speaker, but not so far back that we're getting you know other artifacts mixed in there. So I'm going to put this in front of my speaker system. And for this example, I'm going to just be using a... Um, modest electro voice powered loudspeaker and uh, we'll see what we get so we've returned to our mixer control panel screen and we have the calibration mic plugged in and we have the mixer plugged into our loudspeaker system and uh, since we are connecting to a calibration microphone which is a capacitor microphone I'm going to go to channel 16 where it's connected and enable phantom power because the microphone requires that to operate and I will adjust the gain as necessary because we're now dealing with a microphone rather than a line level source which is uh, a lot, lot hotter so I'm going to bump the gain up as necessary I'm going to go over to our main bus outputs and make sure that the gain is not set excessively high because I don't want to break things with too much pink noise. We don't need ridiculous amounts of output level. We just need enough to be able to analyze. And so I think that's a nice place to be. And then we will, and once again, make sure that channel 16, our microphone input channel, is set to mute because I definitely do not want that to create feedback to the system. Now we're going to go back up to our oscillator, select the oscillator tab, and so by hitting this we can once again turn on the pink noise generator and send some pink noise out to the system. And of course this time it's going to actually go through the speakers and be picked up by the microphone. So I'll turn that on. I can get rid of that panel. Now you can see that the level has come up. We're putting some output through the mains here. And if I take a look at the equalization and its RTA function, you see that we're putting out a fairly even spectrum of pink noise, as we would expect. And then if we pop over to channel 16, where the microphone is, and it's listening to the output, you can see that uh, it's picking up the pink noise as well, but there's some aberrations in the frequency response. Um, the speaker system can't reproduce those super lows, which is no surprise. And... Um, I got a little bit of bump here in the low end that's a bit excessive and we've got some dips happening up here and a peak up in the kind of the high high end now I'm not trying to achieve an absolutely flat response there's no way that the loudspeaker system is going to be able to reproduce these extreme lows and that's okay and uh, I don't like this bump here because um, you're going to hear that so we're going to want to try to reduce the output in that region a little bit same thing with this bump up here I'm going to try to smooth him out I'm not going for perfectly flat response but I want at least smooth response across the spectrum the peaks cause me more concern than the valleys these little dips in here our ear brain will fill in and we probably won't notice them so much but if there's a peak in the response like right here possibly right through here here and certainly through here uh, that will become apparent to our, our ear. And so we want to smooth those things out. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm analyzing on channel 16, but I don't want to make adjustments here because that won't do us any good. I want to go to our main left and right output and make the appropriate adjustments into the response 
so that it will have an impact over here on the signal that we receive to smooth out that area. So I'm going to um, tweak around with this for a few minutes and I'll be right back. So as you can see after spending a couple of minutes tweaking the filters on the main bus we were able to get the measured input signal coming into channel 16 to be well more or less flat. Um, there's still a few little dips in there but that's okay. And uh, you can see that uh, on the main bus I've applied a few filters here and there. Nothing really too crazy severe but just enough in order to knock down some of those uh, excessive peaks that we were experiencing earlier. And um, I find in practice that I actually want to have a little bit of slope coming off on the high end so I'd like to have it a little bit rounded here. And uh, you can adjust that to taste once you listen to the system a little bit. So this is probably a pretty good place to start and uh, after this I will play some music to the PA system and see how it sounds to me. Um, I would expect it'll sound a little better than it did when we first began. And then at that point I'll go back to the main bus here and I'll do some fine tuning on these filters according to my ear to make it uh, sound pleasing to me. But uh, this is what the instrument is showing us and um, it should get us uh, pretty much in the ballpark to a relatively flat output as you can see by the spectrum that we have here. Obviously I can't fix this bottom end and I'm not going to try to make the speaker system do something which it's not really all that capable of doing. So as you can see it's really quite easy to use the built-in tools in your digital mixer to uh, analyze your sound system and figure out just exactly what the correct equalization is to maximize the performance of your loudspeaker system. Really pretty easy, doesn't require a lot of expensive parts, just an inexpensive calibration microphone. I hope that's a useful tip for you and I hope that you have great sounding shows. My name is Barry, I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis-St. Paul Twin Cities area. If you're in the area, I'd love to help you out. If you'd like to catch more of this content, I would appreciate if you would subscribe and make sure to hit the bell icon up there so that YouTube will notify you of new and fresh content. Well, thanks again for stopping by, and I hope to see you again in another episode of Sound Advice.